Every morning I woke up, you hear me? It was something different. It was either the TV got dog on being loud. It was either people shit hanging over my bed, gripping. It was either motherfuckers still sleeping on my bed, sitting on my bed. Every morning I woke up to something different. And if you think the mornings was shit, you should have seen how the night was. See, when I got in D-Dorm, they was getting ready to do a count. And this is my first time in D-Dorm, and this is my first time seeing how shit works out there. And the way they do the count, they don't cross as old. They come in and they count each one one by one. But you holler out the numbers, you dig what I'm saying? And me not knowing the first time that I'm doing the shit that I'm gonna get this something so simple wrong. I miscounted, I didn't know I was supposed to holler out the number. And I was watching the others do it, but I didn't know when it got to me, it was my turn. And when I do some shit like that, that means I gotta take away from the people who are on the phone time. I gotta take away from the people who watching TV. I gotta take away from the people who on their knees complaining, cut those, all that falling on me. Now I got a mark on my back. So as a fucked up day night, and here comes the part when I tell you whether it's true, based on true stories. Here it is when they sitting up and everybody getting up when they supposed to be sleeping. They walking all through the dome. They walking all through the dome. They got them, they got cigarettes up, they smoking cigarettes. They got the ones in the back, they smoking a little mojo. They got the ones in the back smoking, they real doji. All that shit going on while the devil is on the other side looking at everybody. And I'm not used to the shit from where the fuck I'm from. So as I was sitting on my bed, I noticed the dudes in the back. They was getting in a circle. And shit started to come to my head because every time I seen a circle, I also thought about red call. And I thought about what happened to me at the parish. And I didn't want to be participating in this shit. No, I didn't. So I sat on my bed and I watched everybody get in the circle. And I noticed they started rapping. I'm talking about a fire rap song, the whole dorm in that bitch jamming with. And I'm sitting there listening and I'm vibing. I'm like, yeah, these boys getting it up there. Now I wonder why none of these dudes ain't cut no album yet. That's not, I mean, I'm just asking. But as I'm sitting there, I'm starting to feel it. So I get up and I start going walk towards the circle. And as I start going towards the circle, I see dudes start bobbing their head. And I notice two dudes going like this. I ain't saying nothing, just pointing at each other. And as they pointing at each other, I noticed they started getting in the circle. I'm like, man, no, not this time. It can't be the same shit that's going on in the parish. They got these people here and they're bigger and they're better and they're watching this. But as I noticed the dudes in the circle, they started doing like the shit, dancing and hitting and fighting and fighting and fighting. And I'm looking at the dudes, looking at the end of the hall, at the, my bed, at the end of the bed racks, and he looking and he making sure the guards ain't looking or nothing like that. And I'm looking at, they got another dude at the door looking through this little square peephole window. And he looking and standing up there like this and making sure nobody ain't coming. Man, what I got myself into, that's what I'm saying. This is about being shipped and you ain't had no way of knowing you about to be shipped to some new and bigger and worse of shit. So here it is as I'm getting, getting watching them fight. Here it is, I see two more dudes doing it like this shit. And I'm looking at them doing it, they doing this shit. And they get in the circle and they start doing the same thing. And I'm noticing a dude to my right side up there just looking at me, just looking at me like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I'm about to go sit back on my bed. By that time, old boy and them got walked up and the nigga wiped out his face and another dude. The little dude got in there and he got in the circle. And he started turning around and turning around and turning around and he pointed to me. You understand me? He pointed to me. They got over a hundred some dudes in this mother. And he pointed to me. So as he walked, as he walked towards me, and he started grabbing me by the shirt and pulling me in and sweating on me, sweating on me. And I'm trying to figure out why I'm to get out of here. It ain't no bars, so I can't go run and jump on the bars, so that's out. Dudes right there still up there watching out, making sure nobody ain't come. But by this time, I need some help. So what am I supposed to do? As the dude turned around and he stepped, he got off me and I easily jumped up and took off running. Another dude tried to push me back. I went between his legs. I went between his legs and I ran to the key and I started hitting on the thing, hitting on the thing. The guard looking at me like the sin. Where's the justice in this mother? That's what I'm saying. And you gotta realize this shit here based on true stories. As the night went by and after I got my ass whooped and as the guard didn't come in and help me, I easily made my way to the rack where everybody I noticed shit started crying down. And I'm not knowing that at five o'clock these bitches about to come in and easily open up the door and holler child for breakfast. And as I'm sleeping in a deep sleep and nobody waking me up so I forget to miss child. So as the bitch come back in, they come back in and making all kinds of noise, they're brushing their teeth after they didn't brush their teeth before they go to child. Which mean they know there was child was coming. 
but they let me roll and die and slept in the bed. As I got up, I eased onto the sink and I started washing my face, pushing the button in. And as the water started popping up cold as a mug, I started brushing my teeth and washing my face. I'm looking at the dude on the left side of the gun and said, you know, just doing the shit, just doing the shit. His hands are all up in his pants. And what tripped me out the most is that you got your hands on your pants and you're brushing your teeth and you're rubbing your balls and putting your hand on the hand and wash your same face with that shit. So as the day come forward, as it come to 9 or 10 o'clock, everybody up easing up, you know what I'm saying? They still got some people in their rack sleeping. 11 o'clock, they come in and suck and they come in and they do a quick count. And everybody that's sleep, you gotta wake up and sit up. So I started catching on to the part when it gets to my point to hide about the number count. And as I caught on to it, I eased my way through that lip confrontation. Here it is, they call yard call. Now yard call is kind of different out there because they open up all the ground. And I'm not saying your enemies is your enemies, but you about to be seen by some enemies of yours. Because everybody opened up. They get to come in your shit. You get to go in their shit. You get to steal shit out of their shit. They get to steal shit out of your shit. Of course, I got a lot of shit stolen from me. Get the shit off me. So as I noticed, I see somebody loud me on school scoop, and I looked at the car because I know that somebody I know finally. It's my cousin up the road, and he from New Rose, and his name Louis J. Smith. And I see somebody else with him, my brother-in-law. So as I'm looking at them, I'm asking them, I say, how can I get some cigarettes? And my brother-in-law whispered, man, yes, you might not want to do shit out here like you was doing it out there. It's different. And I'm listening to him, but in my mind, I say, he just scammed. He said, if you ask for something out here and you can't give it back to him, they're going to want it back. So he said, if there's anything I can help you with, let me get it for you, brother-in-law. And that's what he told me. So my brother-in-law finally got me some cigarettes. And as we got me some cigarettes, it was time for the chop the line of clothes. I mean, the darn red car to end because we was getting ready to go to chop. So as the red car closed and I got me some cigarettes, finally I'm smoking on some bugles. I got a dude coming here sitting on my rack and he's just sitting there talking to me. So I'm not knowing that he really playing a penitentiary game just to get to smoking with me and talking and running some elves. The elves he was running, it was making me feel so I was smoking cigarettes after cigarettes, so I was giving him cigarettes. I noticed when I got down to my last cigarette, he asked for a shot, and I told him, nah, this is my last one. It was cool. He, you know what I'm saying? I noticed he was getting the kind of attitude. So as he looked at me like that, then he said, man, I snatched that bitch from you. And I'm looking at him, man, I just smoked a whole pack of cigarettes. You gonna turn on me like that? The deputies coming in and opened the door and saved my life, and everybody went to chop. And me going to child, I'm in there eating because I'm going to take my time to eat because I know I might be sp spitting this shit up when I go in there. I know I got to go to Red Car. So I'm taking my time and eating, eating. And the guard come up and he out of everybody up. I'm like, man, you quicker than I thought you was. So as I started going, I'm getting in line and start dumping my trash down. We started going in line and we started going back to the back. My heart started beating because I'm thinking that something about to happen to me real bad because after all, I didn't get a dude the last shot of my cigarette. And it kind of messed with me. So as we started walking in the doors one by one by one, one I noticed a dude was over there sitting on the table. And he had his whole both his hands in his pants like this here all of a sudden. And he was looking back at me and it was just rocking. It was just rocking. Everybody else doing what they doing, watching TV, listening to the music, on the floor, playing chess, playing dominoes, playing cutthroat, playing spade, playing song. Ain't nobody really noticing what I'm noticing. The dude got up, and as he got up, he started walking towards around the table. He walked around the line where he had the phone hanging up on the wall. And as he had the phone hanging up the wall, he started walking towards me. And when I noticed he started walking towards me, he walked past me, but he walked just enough past me for the turn around and hit me in my jaw. So as he hit me in the jaw, the dude on top of me fighting me in my bed because I didn't want to give him another mind my last shot off a cigarette. And as I noticed, I seen the doors opening, I seen the people coming in and then they running in there. They running in there to get him off top of me. They running him and after they got him off top of me, they took him outside and they shut the door. They left me in that bitch. They did not ask me was I all right. Did I need any kind of medical attention or none of that. So as the door opened back up, they let the dude back in. Back in with me. Thank you.